Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to your 11-11 day. Yes, it is November 11th, which is a really cool day, which is really, really cool. Very strong activation energies today. Um, very much, I'm hearing very strong reset button being pushed today. Um, and I guess you can, you can say it a reset button, but it's also a start button. It's kind of what I'm feeling here for kind of the rest of your manifestations to come into fruition. Um, this is really is a, a new, a new day to, um, I'm hearing start over your life basically, which is a really kind of a good thing. Um, I don't have a pre shuffle. Um, because there are a number of things that I want to talk about before we get started here. Um, but with that said, I do want to say that this is going to be a general energy reading for the 11th of November, but it doesn't have to be just the 11th of November. I really, especially since, you know, today is 11, 11, um, and 11, 11 day. Uh, I feel like we're there, there's going to be almost like an extra extension of what, of what's to come within these energies here. So really this is one of those, those strong moments where time really is an illusion and you're just going to have to go with the flow and see how things resonate for you as time moves on, uh, from the moment that you watch this reading on. Okay. However, there are, before I get, I get started, there are a number of things that I want to talk about before, um, we get into the reading here. First things first, if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you know that, um, well, you were probably aware that I had a little bit of, I got into a little bit of a tiff with a viewer over the weekend. Um, and normally I wouldn't want to talk about this any more than I already have because I'm not trying to give it any more energy than it is necessary. Uh, however, something, uh, something was said that I really want to bring attention to. Um, in terms of the spiritual community that we are, we, we find ourselves a part of. Whether you identify with the spiritual spirituality or being spiritual or spiritual path, whatnot, whatever, or not, it doesn't really matter because ultimately that's just a label. Technically, we all are on spiritual paths, okay? But they are, they're all, they're all going to look different. No one spiritual path looks the same because no one person has the same makeup or the same challenges, the same obstacles, the same goals, whatnot, whatever. Really, not, not completely the same. We all share some stuff, but you get what I'm saying. So, um, I'll recap a little bit, but then I'll talk about what I really want to say here. This person uh, was watching the Virgo video for November and decided that because I was, I guess, rambling or talking too much, they decided they were going to leave a snarky, passive aggressive comment saying something to the effect of, you talk so much so we can just click to the next one. Me being the person that I am, that's not gonna stand by and just allow someone to be rude for no reason. I said, okay, bye. Now here's the thing. The person, apparently, I come to find out later on that this person was under was under the impression that they were giving me some sort of um, constructive criticism in, in terms of how I, quote, talk too much, I guess. I'm not going to go, I'm not looking back. I'm not going to read it verbatim. You guys can read it if you want to. It's on the Virgo reading for November. Don't bother trying to reply or anything because this person has already been blocked or hidden from the channel, okay? So they're not going to see your reply. However, um, the thing about it is, I, I, first of all, the name of the, the channel is Divine Conversations. So we're here to have a conversation, okay? If you can't sit and, and watch a longer reading, then just don't watch it, okay? Um, but this person was under the impression that because I am of, supposed to be of spiritual consciousness, or I'm sorry, divine consciousness is what they said, I am not allowed to defend myself in some way. Uh, and it seems that I was picking up exactly on what they were throwing down. They were being snarky, passive aggressive, and thought that they could leave a snarky comment and not get and, and not have to deal with any repercussions. And then had the nerve to tell me that because I'm of a divine consciousness, I should. And they were just leaving um, constructive criticism. I should just basically, in other words, uh, these are not the specific words they use, but in other words, I should have just rolled over and taken it. That's the one thing. That is the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention right now. 
okay just because we are of a spiritual mindset just because we are we are working on cultivating divine consciousness does not mean that we can we are allowed we we are required to be doormats we are not doormats here okay if i talk too much for you and you don't like it you can just fuck off now okay but leaving a snarky comment thinking that you can anonymous, anonymously drop some bomb and then run away into the darkness and not get and not get any sort of repercussions is a common misconception. We are not doormats here. So I say this not just for myself, but I say this for everyone else that's around here that's dealing with this bullshit. You are very much allowed to defend yourself. You have every right to defend yourself. And quite frankly, I will go ahead and say that you are encouraged to defend yourself. Don't go looking for a fight. Please do not go looking for a fight. That is not what I'm endorsing here. But if somebody's going to step to you talking some mess, you don't have to just roll over and take it because you are of divine consciousness. That is some bullshit. So if I talk too much for you, if I'm too aggressive for you, if I'm too clap back for you, then you can fuck off now. Get the fuck off my channel and don't come back. Leave your snarky comments if you want to. That's fine. You will be, they will be deleted and you will be hidden from the channel. Take your pick. Do I make myself clear? Excellent. Moving forward, the rest of the week is going to be really interesting. I have an appointment today to have a minor procedure done, and I'm most likely not going to be able to talk too much. So with that said, this is probably going to be the last morning coffee for the next few days. I will keep you guys updated as much as humanly possible. But I do have this procedure. Um, that I have scheduled for today and I'm like I said I'm most likely not going to be able to talk too much so I'll keep you guys posted but this is going to be um, the last morning coffee at least for the next two days we'll see how sore I am I might be able to get around it maybe come like Thursday because today is Monday I'm gonna give myself like definitely tomorrow maybe Wednesday to see what's going on I'm gonna so so that means that the you know our normal live sessions of afternoon tea today and happy hour and then potentially another live weekend check-in which I really enjoyed doing I definitely want to do that more I want to do more live sessions anyway um, so our live sessions this week um, some of them are will be postponed if not canceled I am still gonna try and do happy hour but again I have to I have to pace myself because I'm having this oral I have this oral procedure that needs to be done um, basically I have to have a, a cyst I'm sure you guys have noticed by now but I have this cyst on my lip that has to be removed so that's gonna that's gonna be a little painful <laughs> but I do want to comment on that also because it's the 1111 portal and I'm, I'm, I've been working on trying to figure out why this has like grown on my lip. It doesn't hurt. It's not infected. It's just, it's basically, it's what's called a mucosil, which is um, a cyst, but it's basically like, like a big, like booger <laughs> in my lip, which is really gross. I'll spare you the rest of the gory details, but um, normally they happen like if you bite your lip or something like that. I am around the time that it happened that it developed on my lip it was the time that I was going through a major awakening a major purging cycle of um, toxic narcissistic energies in my life which included a reflection of my situation with my ex-husband and a reflection of a situation with this twin flame catalyst energy that I came across during the divorce session during the period of when I was actively leaving my husband and divorcing him for the second time around but this time it clicked but this cyst basically developed on my lip literally during the time where I was purging coming aware of the cycles that these energies or these people represented in my life and purging them out and so now on this 11 11 day it just so happened that I I was able to um, manifest an appointment to have the cyst removed and I didn't re like I, I went in I think I went in on Friday um, and I had the appointment made. They were like, how about the earliest they had was Monday. I was like, you know what? That's great. That's perfect. Monday will work. And then later on, I realized, holy shit, Monday is 11-11. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, y'all. So already, this, this, this I want to call it a portal. I guess we can call it a portal. That's really the only 
identifying language that we have or that I have right now in terms of it. So I guess, sure, we'll call it a portal. It really doesn't matter, but an energetic gateway, okay? A stargate. These are things that I'm hearing as I'm saying this. So this is going to be a really interesting day, a really interesting time period. What I want to say so far is pay very close attention to what happens in your life today, but then especially moving forward. Um, stay aware as you can. Stay focused as you can. Don't let anything get you down. All right, guys? Whew. Okay, so with that said, let's get to the rest of the reading, shall we? You know what, before I start, um, and some of you have noticed that I don't have my um, Mercury retrograde candle. It's because it's burnt to the max. I can't even light the wick anymore. Um, so now I just have to dig the, the crystals that were in there out of it. Um, but what I do wanna do before I start is I wanna relight my sage here, just to give us some extra cleansing energies and then we'll get started. Sorry, it's a little bit of a delay here today, but if that really is a problem for you, then I guess this just isn't the video for you, huh? Mm. Okay. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, November 11th, a.k.a. 11-11, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this three shuffles. And then we'll see what we've got for today. Yes? One. Two. Three. Oh, also, the P.O. box. Um, oh. A number. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to. I need to say this before I before I continue. First of all, a number of you emailed me about readings over the weekend. I am not ignoring you. I just don't. I don't. I make it a point not to handle emails over the weekend. I'm gonna get back to you today. If you're still interested in, in a reading, I will get you guys scheduled. Scheduled, but just know because I'm having this procedure done, um, it's gonna be. It, it's not gonna be the normal short turnover time that it normally is. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, Oh, shoot. I forgot the other thing I was going to say. Damn it. It'll come back to me eventually. Let's get to the reading here. Okay. What is what is it that you have for us today, spirit? for our 11-11 portal. For our 11-11 portal. Okay. All right, there we go. We have, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, we have the Four of Pentacles with death as our overall energy. Sorry, let me try and adjust the lighting here. We also have quite a bit of other things. But... So the first, one of the first cards that came out here is this Wheel of Fortune. We also have the Five of Cups with the Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, the Hanged Man, and the Emperor. And then we have the Six of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Two of Wands. First thing that I'm getting here is we definitely have a soulmate situation. We do. And this does, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to speak to anyone specific here, okay? We're not speaking to anybody specific, but what I'm getting with this Six of Wands, I'm sorry, Six of Cups, Two of Wands, Seven of Swords, 
someone is deciding on what they want to do soulmate wise or in terms of a, a soulmate relationship or it could be ooh, the, yep there's that ace of cups there um this could be soulmates this could be love this could also be something that you might be really passionate about something that was um I want, what I'm hearing is part of your life as a child or something that you were really enthusiastic about as a child, some sort of dream. Uh, it might be a creative endeavor, especially with that Ace of Cups. But um, what I'm trying to say is this, this, the biggest thing that I'm feeling is some sort of soulmate relationship, counterparts, love interests, whatnot, whatever. Um, divine counterparts, I'm hearing. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. If you're more in a creative endeavor, then this also could be something, this does feel like something that is very emotionally fulfilling for you, something that is you're really drawn to emotionally, something that really fills you with joy, happiness, love, and all that stuff. Um, the Seven of Swords has been coming out a lot. Not just for me, for other readers too. However, the vibe that I'm getting from the Seven of Swords and basically the, the general vibe lately from the Seven of Swords has been keeping something to yourself. Keeping your cards close to your to your chest, not really letting people in on what it is you're you're going through, you're seeing through, you're you're ma developing, you're manifesting. It doesn't mean that you're being completely hush hush about it. You could be talking to certain individuals, you know, close friends, family members, maybe trying to get some advice, people that you really trust. But generally speaking, you're keeping it under wraps, okay? Or this person is keeping it under wraps. This person could be at a distance from you is what I'm I am feeling. I I'm like I'm seeing overseas or um, and that's been a, gener a a common message lately too. This person could be overseas or maybe on a in a different state, maybe in a different city, but I'm just feeling like large distances uh, other half of the other end of the country, whereas you could be on the West Coast, they're on the East Coast, or you're the East Coast, they're the West, something like that. Um, or like I said, they're in another state. Maybe they're on another another side of the state, because you know, we do have some fairly large states in this country. Um, I'm just feeling some sort of distance. If it's not physical distance, then it's emotional, mental um, distance as well. Okay, uh, let's go to this next. We have the Five of Cups with the Wheel of Fortune. What this is saying to me is, and, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, what I'm feeling here, this is mostly for some sort of, some not some sort of, excuse me, I don't mean to say it that way, but this is mostly for a masculine energy out here. Now, the feminine counterpart in this situation could be feeling this as well, but the feminine in the counterpart is expressing this in a different way. And I'll get to that in a second. But there is some sort of manifestation happening here in terms of some sort of regret, remorse, shame. What I'm getting is this is a past energy. This, these five, this five of cups here, this is a past energy. And in this situation, someone is manifesting something new in terms of, in light of, excuse me, what has happened in the past. Now, and that's what I'm seeing here. Two of Wands, Six of Cups, Seven of Swords, okay? There's a decision that's needing to be made. This could be something, this could be you now working on manifesting something completely new. Or you could be manifesting a resurrection of some sort of relationship or situation from the past. My advice to you is to continue focusing on what it is that you've learned in this situation, what it is that is influencing you to manifest something new in, in spite of or in light of, I want to say in light, not out of spite, but in light of something that has happened in the past, creating something new and better as a result of what you've experienced in the past. Don't focus on the details. Don't focus on the individuals involved. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't focus on the time frame. Don't focus on when it's supposed to happen, how it's supposed to happen, why it's supposed to happen either. Just focus on the contrast that you've experienced that is now giving rise to a desire to create something new out of it. And let the universe just bring the pieces together as they see fit. Because ultimately the universe is going to do this in a way that is 
always for your highest good, even if it involves bringing another person back into, oh, well, bringing the same person back into your existence. Now that can go, let's talk about that for a second. That could go one of two ways. One, this person can come back into your life and they could be exhibiting the same toxic, maybe even narcissistic or just non-beneficial energy that you decided to remove yourself from in the past. Should that happen, there's a simple solution. You simply say, no, actually, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. Thank you for the offer but I do not accept and you move on with your life there's no need to be uh, to fight about it there's no need to go up in arms about it there's no need to throw daggers there's no none of that just simply say no thank you I don't want that anymore that is the universe making sure that you are on and you are sticking to your guns basically the other way this can go is this person returns to your life and they're a completely new and changed person. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that you have to automatically just let them in 100% and you, you know there's no sort of vetting process. No. Uh, it would be advised to allow this person into your life, sure, but slowly, in increments. Allow, uh, uh, allow them to prove that they have changed and that they're willing to lead a better life or be a better example. Okay. Excellent. So let's get to this middle pile here. We have the Queen of Pentacles, the Hanged Man, the Ace of Wands, and the Emperor. So here we have the masculine and the feminine energies. <clears throat> okay. Now this could be the masculine and feminine with you, however within you, excuse me. However, what I'm seeing here is um external realities. I'm seeing counterparts. I'm seeing two individuals, one embodying the masculine energy, one embodying the feminine energy. Okay. The feminine is yet again showing up as the queen of pentacles. This is the energy that, the, that many in the feminine collective, especially those that I've been channeling for, have been, this is the energy that they've been embodying for quite some time now. Okay. This is kind of what we in the feminine collective, again, for those of us that I've been channeling for, this is the energy that we have settled into. We are already in our Empress status, correct? But we are choosing the archetype of the Queen of Pentacles to embody at this moment because this is what we want. This is who we are, really. We are grounded. We are financially secure. We stand in our integrity. We are the mothers, the wives, and whatever. I'm not talking about gender, I'm talking about energy. So we're the husbands, we're the wives, we're the mothers, we're the fathers, we're the family makers, we're the caregivers. We're the nurturers. The masculine is in the energy of stepping into his or her emperor status, which in turn could then, once he, once he or she has that settled and solid, then they can, they can adopt the archetype of the king of pentacles to match the queen of pentacles, because basically that's who the queen of pentacles is manifesting, the, que the king to her queen. Right. And so as the, the feminine has gone through this period of enlightenment, change in perspective with the hanged man here, we have now she has settled into her physical embodiment of that empress energy. Well, then as the feminine went through that, now that is influencing or allowing space for the masculine to do this. So we have the hanged man, we have the ace of wands, and then ultimately we have the emperor. We have an energy in which someone is going through the process of waking up. In this side of the hanged man, normally we have the hanged man like this, where we just see the hanged man hanging from this, this I guess we could call him a gallows, um, in, in purposefully hung here in order to gain some sort of change in perspective, correct? Well, now we have this side of the card, and this is the side that came out with the reading here. And we have the two individuals that were once being indoctrinated by the Hierophant that are now standing in front of the hanged man, learning the lesson of, wait a second, maybe there really is more to what's been, to what's going on here than what we have been led on to or what we have been led to believe. This is the moment where someone starts independently thinking. Someone starts questioning, asking questions, seeking their own answers doing their own research, in essence, finding out for themselves instead of just relying on what. Hi, Starling. Ooh, the Starlings are back. There's three of them. They're just landing on my window, chilling out. I love that they do that. The Starlings and the, and the Sparrows, they like, I think, you know what I think, guys? I think some of them were looking for 
I'm sorry, this is a complete tangent, but this is for those of you that um, that connected with me on this before. I think they were some of them were looking for a, a place to build a nest, which I would have absolutely loved. Like, I know they can be noisy, like especially when they have their chicks, but oh my God, I would have loved if they, if they could build like a nest right above my window. I wouldn't, I would love that so much. Okay, anyway. Oh, and there was someone, I don't know if you're watching Morning Coffee, but there was someone that was watching one of my lives and mentioned that there was some sort of information that you had or that you had heard about um, birds like landing on your windows or something like that while, I guess, while you're channeling a message or something. If you're watching and you have that information or you know what that person might have been referring to, can you please share that with me? Because I've ever since somebody said that, I've been wondering what that was okay anyway let's get back into the reading but this is the moment where somebody wakes up or starts to wake up starts asking questions for themselves and start seeking answers thus we have the inspiration or the lightning strike in the ace of wands which is allowing someone to move in some sort of new direction passionately and is ultimately giving this person the wherewithal or the ability to now step into this emperor power and be the master of their own domain very much in the same way that the feminine has done here with this queen of pentacles energy and thus we have with your overall energy four of pentacles and death we have the release of some sort of situation or some sort of foundation this could be financial in nature um i just heard but some sort of foundation that seems to be released or being let go of or at least reanalyzed in order to understand what can be kept and what needs to be left behind i'm getting that specifically with this individual looking out uh into the distance uh, it look basically looking out into what has been built okay so you're either releasing massive amounts of stuff into your life out of uh, from your life excuse me or you're in the process of discovering what needs to be let go of what can still uh, exist within the situation what not whatever now the other thing I want to say is this absolutely could be a situation in which this is the masculine and feminine energy within you okay if this is the case because what i feel like is happening here is the the masculine is entering or is in the process of stepping into the emperor energy um if that if and so then if we're talking about both masculine and feminine within you then this is most likely the feminine here who is also entering into her masculine his or her masculine energy okay I like this, guys. I like this a lot. I'm going to move forward into clarification now. I just want to look at what what is most pressing to identify here. All right. We're going to start with the Wheel of Fortune and the Five of Cups. I want to look at how I want to look at how these energies are manifesting here. I want to give you guys some advice and the advice is going to com come in the form of further identifying what these energies are looking like for you. Wheel of Fortune, Five of Cups. What is it that is in the process of being manifested in spite of or in light of what has transpired on an emotional level for you what has spilled over obviously that was pretty toxic in in general okay but now what is what is being manifested in terms of this in light of this as a result of this let's just let's get a little bit of a check-in here for you in terms of what is manifesting here Maybe even how it's coming together. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Because I do feel like you're very much taking a very active role. Uh, before obviously I have something else to say before I get the card out but um, you're taking a very active I'm sorry I'm hoping that this brightens up there we go you're taking a very active role in this manifestation but it, you're very aware that the universe is driving the universe is in the driver's seat right but you are 
taking your active part in making sure that you stay in alignment with what it is that you desire. You're, I, I feel a very strong energy of you're holding your alignment, the alignment that you've been able to cultivate or, or, or move into after some sort of loss. And whatever, after whatever that lesson of loss, whatever you lost, like really set in. This is like no longer, this is very strongly I'm feeling, this is no longer, um, no longer manifesting by default. Okay. Yes, there you go. Seven of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck, the root of the situation here, the root of these energies for you. Seven of Pentacles is, um, a harvest is learning through the contrast. Literally, that's my learning through the contrast card. You have the five of pentacles with strength. Yep, the queen of wands and the seven of cups. That's excellent. So in terms of five of pentacles here, uh, feelings of lack, um, loss, uh, destitution, uh, poverty, um, not being good enough, uh, lack mentality, whatnot, whatever. It seems that you really come out of that. Strength to the Queen of Wands. I mean, the Queen of Wands, in my opinion, is um, a physical embodiment of the law of attraction, okay? The Queen of Wands is magical. She's fierce. She's, she's com I, I hear competitive. Yeah, she's competitive. She's, she knows what she wants. She's not afraid to get it. Um, she's, she's the feminine in the fact that she is receptive. So she, she sits in her alignment and she allows that which she desires to gravitate towards her. That's why I, I see her as the law, a physical embodiment of the law of attraction. Um, and with this strength card here, it really feels like you're holding your own. You're very composed in this moment. You know exactly what it is that you want. You're not afraid to... You're not afraid to work with the universe. You're also not afraid to work with the unknown energies. That's what we also have the seven of cups here, okay? Um, you know, a lot could happen. You never know what could come forward, but as long as you stay in your alignment, you're not afraid of that. You're not afraid of that. I really like the way this is coming together for you. This is beautiful. And again, Queen of Wands, this is not, we're not talking about gender. We're talking, we're not, okay. We're just talking about the energies here. So you could be this masculine energy that's working towards stepping into your emperor power here and embodying the feminine qualities of receptivity, strength, charisma, um, um, self-confidence. Also cardinal energy the feminine or the queens do represent cardinal energies. So the queen of wands does represent Aries energy, but a cardinal energy could be, is an individual or is an energy that is willing to break the mold, that is willing to go off the beaten path, that is willing to do something brand new, never seen before. You know, they, they, they live for things like that. They, they strive towards being able to be a trailblazer. So you could be very much taking on some sort of trailblazing energy in your life right now and going against the norm. And this doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, societal norms. This could just mean going against the norm in terms of who you are and what you've done in the past in your life and how you've gone about things. This could be going against your own norm, that kind of energy. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Um, the next thing I want to go to here is the Two of Wands, the Six of Cups, and the Seven of Swords. Now, here's the thing about this. Um, I'm very cautious in getting into these energies because I'm really not trying to spy on you or anyone here. I'm not trying to spy for you on someone else for you on your. For, I'm not trying to spy on someone else for your behalf or on your behalf. Um, however, I do want to define these energies a little bit here. Two of Wands, Six of Cups, Seven of Swords. Let's see. Wow. Okay. Damn, the Seven of Pentacles again. All right, cool. Ooh, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Okay, well we have the star with the devil. Overall energy is the knight of pentacles. Okay, okay. Oh man, 
Oh man, that's really interesting. Um, we also have the Knight of Wands, and the Knight of Wands came out and fell on this pile here, okay? So I do feel like someone has definitely entered into some sort of activation, activating energy, okay? We have the star, which is faith, wish fulfillment, healing. I'm also, get, again, I'm getting a sense of travel with the star. However, we also have it coupled with the devil and what I really feel like this is talking about here is the devil is here trying to trying to tear you down, maybe trying to push you off the path that the star is leading you towards. This is going to sound so strange, you guys. This is going to sound so strange, but I really feel like the star and the devil are working together from opposing sides, one representing the light or the star, one representing the dark, the devil, but they're working together. I know, just bear with me. They're working together to get you where you need to go, to get you to where you have been activated towards moving, to activated in the sense of moving towards the Knight of Wands. I know that sounds crazy, but then overall energy, you have the Knight of Pentacles, slowly but steadily winning, <laughs> winning the race, yes. Slowly but steadily, slowly but surely winning the race here, taking it step by step. And it feels like the devil energies, whatever, is, whatever fear is around you right now, now hold on, because also we do have the seven of swords here. But what I'm saying, what I wanted to say is whatever fear or devilish energy that is surrounding you at this moment is causing you to be stronger, to hold your own better. It's like, it's almost like it's a constant reminder of where you don't want, of what you don't want to slip back into. And so at, in essence, this is helping to push you along. Interesting concept. Right? But then you also have this seven of swords here at the bottom. So this devil energy that's lurking around could also be why you are, in essence, keeping your mouth shut or kind of trying to sneak away into the night. Because you're not trying to alert any sort of devilish activity. You're not trying to stir up any drama, any commotion. You're not trying to let anybody get in between you and your manifestations. But again, the devil energy is in fact serving a purpose. So even if you don't necessarily, you can't, you don't necessarily see it right now. You can't see it right now. You don't understand how this actually could possibly even be. Just trust me, understand that the universe works in very mysterious ways. Okay. You'll figure it out eventually. Like you'll start, it'll come together when the time is right. But right now, that's what this is saying here. That's really beautiful. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to move to the Golden Universe Tarot, and I want to get Spirit's advice specifically in terms of this energy here, the star and the devil. How do we handle this? Here's the three shuffles. The star and the devil. So, spirit's advice for you here. What is this? What is this spirit? What advice do you have here? Death. Transformation. I want to... Okay. Yeah. All right. We also have the Ace of Wands at the bottom of the deck, but right now, so far, the message here is stay strong, stay true, because you're going through a transformation, okay? 100% for sure. For sure. I want to get a little bit more from Spirit. Advice, please. Ooh, ciao. Wow. See, now all the, now all the cards come out. All right. So, overall energy. Ooh, yes! The sun. Oh, wow. All right, so check it out, y'all. I really feel like there's some sort of energy of overthrowing. I keep hearing, oh, damn. I keep hearing overthrowing the patriarchy with this. You have the Knight of Swords here with the Four of Wands, the Ten of Wands, the Seven of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and then you have the Ten of, wow. 
holy shit you guys you have the ten of pentacles and the hierophant that flew over on this side but they did come out in reverse and this is literally the patriarchy right here ten of pentacles and the hierophant this is the established energy okay this is the the this is university government societal standards um tradition whatnot whatever this is that energy and i've kept hearing why do i why am i hearing oligarchy i don't i don't i'm not i don't know what that I don't know what that means, but I'm hearing it. So maybe it's relevant to some of you. I don't know. Um, um, but what I'm literally, what I was seeing when everything fell out and I was laying it out here, I was seeing this Knight of Swords energy charging towards this Ten of Pentacles. I didn't realize at the time that the Hierophant was underneath the Ten of Pentacles and I was hearing overthrowing the patriarchy. Now, I'm not, I'm not feeling like we're actually about to go to war. This is an individual basis. What I feel like here is you're going through a transformation, death, and you're in the process of clearing away anything that does not serve the foundation, the spiritual foundation that you have come to. Now, also, for some of you, this has to do with a future home, a future family situation. You are setting the stage, you are laying, laying the found groundwork, you are laying the foundation for a home and family that you're going to, uh, to grow, start, grow, and develop uh, over time. But right now, you're laying the groundwork, you're releasing yourself from the burdens. I keep hearing, I am hearing oligarchy. Uh, I am not familiar with what that term means. For some of you, that's going to resonate. I'll look it up later. It doesn't matter. Um, but you're overthrowing. And what I'm getting with the Seven of, Wand, Seven of Swords here with the Ten of, Wa Ten of Wands, excuse me, and also the Nine of Wands, is you're starting to come to recognize how you've been deceived in the fact that you had to carry all these burdens that weren't necessary for you to carry to begin with. That is what these individuals taught you represented here by the Hierophant and the Ten of Pentacles, okay? I want to, I'm going to look it up now. We're going to look it up now because I keep hearing it and so I feel like it's relevant. So give me a second here. Let me just, let me just look this up. Oligarchy. A small group of people having control of a country, organization, or institution. Yes, okay. That makes perfect sense. A small group of people having control over a country, organization, or institution. You're overthrowing this energy. And again, yes, this is like a revolution, whatnot, whatever. But it is not, it's not like, this is on an individual scale, basically. And it's so interesting because I was just, I just watched Gangs of New York this weekend, which is actually one of my favorite movies. Um, I love, I really like, I do enjoy period pieces, but for some reason that movie is one of my, is, is such a good, it's such a good movie. Um, it's very intense. It's very extreme. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bigotry and, and racism and just, I mean, it was set in the 18, in the 1860s, you know what I mean? In New York city. Um, so that was, those were some pretty rough times, but I was just watching that movie this weekend and it's very interesting now that, that now this this um, reading, this is what we're talking about here. Very interesting. And no, I didn't, and, and, and I haven't heard that word oligarchy all, uh, in a very long time. Uh, I can't remember the last time I've heard it. It's definitely not a part of my normal vocabulary. So that's just, if any of you are wondering if where I'm at, if I'm actually channeling any, anything, I mean, that word just came through and I've, I mean, I, I can't, rem I don't, it's been, I, I don't remember the last time I've even seen that word. So that kind of stuff always kind of like blows my mind a little bit. I mean, it's proof that I really am channeling from somewhere. Other than the fact that many of you say, like, I'm basically reading your mail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's get into your Oracle guidance for this reading, um, and I'm feeling very strongly pulled towards the dragons for this, so we are going to get that message. Oh, I think I just remembered. The P.O. The box was the other thing that I wanted to talk about. 
Um, I have your emails. I'm gonna check today to see what's going on. But that P.O. box, man, that has been such a problem. Okay, anyway, we're gonna move forward. Obviously, it wasn't that important to talk about or I would have remembered earlier, but it's okay. For those of you that are still here, that heard that message, you were meant to hear the message, all right? One last shuffle, and then I just heard oligarchy sucks, okay? Well, shit, y'all. <laughs> Let's get your message from the dragons. There it is. Earth dragon. Wow. Okay. Earth dragon clears your path and the land around you. Stay grounded. Be ready to serve. Stuck energy is clearing. You can move forward in life. And this is 100%. This 100% has to do with the energy and the momentum behind this 1111. Let's just call it a portal for lack of a better term. If you have a better term that you want to call it, if you don't like calling things portals, call it an energetic gateway. If you don't like that, then don't call it anything. I mean, don't get hung up on the label. It's a freaking label, you guys, all right? <laughs> okay. Whatever. Energies are real. That's really all that matters here. Earth Dragon, card number 18. This is a fourth, I'm sorry, page 18. This is a fourth dimensional dragon, which actually makes very well, quite a bit of sense. Um, and it's the first card in the listing, listed in the deck here. So this is cool. Makes a lot of sense. Fourth dimensional earth dragons are brown, the color of soil. They love the planet and the land itself. It was these sturdy dragons who helped to build the original dragon lines that we now call ley lines. Part of their service work is to travel along them to clear them when asked to do so. When we send an instruction to the earth dragons to work with the ley lines, they can power away under the surface to clear any blockages. This impacts hugely on people and situations within the vicinity. They can also help to ground us and our mission in this life. It is time to clear unwanted energies that are preventing your life from moving. I'm sorry, this is the guidance. <laughs> this is the guidance from the card. It is time to clear unwanted energies that are preventing you from moving forward. Ten of Pentacles and the Hierophant in reverse. Very nice. Some of these may be in the earth under your home or office or where you travel. Call on the earth dragons and ask them to remove all that is not in accordance with divine light. Then sense the frequency rising with the land and on your path. This card also suggests you may be called on to do planetary service work as the earth dragons will take the opportunity to cleanse any ley lines you focus on. Take a moment to direct them to clear the planetary grid and visualize the grid glowing and shimmering. When you walk, think of the earth dragons and connect with them through the earth. Ask them to ground you and your vision, for this card signifies that you, they are now boosting your spiritual journey and you are ready to take flight. You are ready to fly. Notice the progress you make. And that also resonates quite strongly with this here. Okay, Wheel of Fortune and the Five of Cups, but it is this side of the Wheel of Fortune in which we have the Magician. All right. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a fantastic play. <laughs> yes, please, have a fantastic play. Play all you like, enjoy yourselves, now is your time. Um, but I also ha hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee. Um, I don't know what that's going to be. I, I it most likely be this week, but pr I'm going to be honest with you guys, probably not until at least Thursday. But I'm going to keep you as posted as much as I possibly can. Yes, much love, take care, and I'll speak with you soon, yeah? Mwah! Bye!